only war. What is up, gents? 40K Dirtbags here. We're doing a video for everybody who's been thinking, are DTs too hard to get into? Are they too much? It's basically how to prepare yourself or your friends how to go to a GT. Uh, it could be for a local RTT or a local GT or a grand tournament um, anywhere in the United States. So with all of our GTs that we actually did last year, that's really how we got placed number one Grey Knight play in the world is really because the amount of GTs you go to, you wanna go to at least four and place really well with them or go to six and they use your best four uh, for the specific army that you're running. So we placed pretty high last year, which was pretty cool. Uh, that's probably why I got a lot of dirt bags uh, on the channel, but we have a lot of videos coming up on the channel. So first off, I'd like to thank you for clicking on the video. Uh, we're gonna get into a lot of different topics on how to prepare for GTs, but there's a whole bunch of stuff that's coming up to the channel. If you guys are new to it, I have a list specifically what we're gonna be playing out on the channel in this order, uh, besides all the battle reports that we have on the channel and streams and all that stuff. But first one, we're doing this one, obviously, how to prepare for a GT. Next one, how to make a Grey Knight list, because obviously we're, we're, Grey Knights are still pretty good, especially in Arcs of Omen, the 10th is coming out, so I'm trying to get these out as soon as possible for you guys. Grey Knight tactics, I'm super excited about that one because there's a lot of tactics that I've been doing over the past two years. How to make a Death Guard list. Uh, transport tactics, that's also a very good one. How to win more 40Ks. 40k games i'm so excited for that one that one's going to be a lot a lot a lot of information so you definitely have to hit the subscribe and the notification so these videos actually pop up for you guys chaos black legion tactics um and how to make i think that's yeah so we got how to make a great night list how to make a death guard list and i like to do death guard tactics uh, at the very end let me write that in there death guard tactics some people rate Death Guard uh, as a bottom army. I think they're bullshit. We're definitely really, really good in the meta right now. Uh, so let's get into this. Uh, thank you to my Patreons. There's about 33 of you guys right now. Grandmasters, Justicars, Patreons, competitive Patreons. If you guys are interested in getting in the competitive scene, uh, I'm... I, I love the competitive scene with 40k so i love to help as many people out as possible even if you're brand new to 40k if you want some insight definitely go join the patreon and have me have any questions available to you on my discord just dm me join the discord everybody helps you out there as well uh there's dice coming uh in about a two three weeks now it's getting closer we have stickers ordered we're doing placemats or objective markers with 3d6 terrain so that's going to be on the website as well uh so there's a lot of shit coming out to the channel so Fuck it, let's get into the video. So first off, how to prepare for a GT. There's a lot of stuff that you wanna kinda prepare before you even go there, uh, so that way when you get there, it makes the experience that much more. You're not worrying about lists, you're not worrying about um, hygiene, about what you have to bring, water, any, like if you do this list step by step, Every single time you go to a GT, you get to have fun and just talk to people because you have everything already prepared. You don't have to worry about taking it on the, on the plane or any of that stuff. All right, so enough enough banter, let's, let's get right into it. So first off, let's start up at the very top, base list on terrain. They're every every grand tournament or RTT or anywhere that you're going, they usually have a player packet that it tells you what type of terrain is gonna be used. You have Games Workshop, you have WTC, you have ITC. The, the terrain is gonna be based off what your list is gonna be doing. Example, I have a local RTT that we used to have first floor line of sight true line of sight so you can see through the windows. Most of the places you can't see first floor line of sight blocking. So you can make your list prepared to hold objectives, put, put banners out, uh, have quick units hop into the objectives and make sure that they're not being shot at by turn one. Uh, can you deploy your entire army in the terrain feature without getting shot turn one? There's a lot of things that the terrain really helps out make your list. Uh, is it player placed? Is it a set terrain? Like the player place is is huge uh, in almost every list that, that I bring into. So example, I think, uh, what's his name? One uh, L, uh, LVO last year because he ran Blood Angels and his player place and literally just put a ruin right dead center in the, in, in the middle of the board. Uh, line of sight blocking, just put his entire fucking Blood Angel army in there and said, all right, I'm here for the rest of the game. <laughs> this, is, this is mine now and then you can't do anything. So he made his list based off that. That's kind of like the first thing is, is you have to do is make your list based off the terrain that they're using uh, at the at the GT. 
can you charge through walls? That's another thing. Uh, some places they use Games Workshop where they have the one inch thing. So you might bring more cultists, more, more troops that you don't care about um, sitting there all game and kind of stopping your charges. Or are you playing terrain where you can kind of hide in between the wall as you charge. I think it's WTC where if you make your charge, you technically charge even though you can't fit your model physically in that terrain feature. Um, what I mean is if, if you're one inch away from the wall and then you have the wall, technically you can't fit your 32 millimeter base in that little pocket right there. But in some GTs, you can charge, still make the charge successful and then pile in afterwards once you kill everybody in there or pile in back behind the wall because then you could physically put your model on the wall. So knowing that ahead of time is definitely gonna help make your list. If you're running an all assault like chaos or world eaters or any type of assault melee list, that's gonna help you out a lot because you're gonna be able to hide your models and you're gonna be able to make those charges. Uh, Bile, for example, if you just run 30 possessed running forward, you wanna make sure that you can actually get there. If people can block you out in those terrain features, you kinda wanna not run an all melee list because then you're just gonna get blocked out, you have to run around and then you'll be shot at. It's almost like running an all vehicles list because the vehicles have to run around the terrain feature. It's essentially the same thing. And you might wanna bring a lot of cultists to block out people from charging your field. So that's definitely another huge thing to prepare for. Player placed roll off. So some I've only been to one grand tournament where when you roll off, you determine what side you're going to get after you place the terrain, which is uh, to me bullshit. But you want to find out that stuff before you go. Uh, if you are placing terrain and then you roll off your side, you want to try and be as even as possible with the terrain. If somebody puts a terrain all the way in the corner, you want to put your terrain all the way in the corner. If they put it in the center, you want to put it in the center. If they put it on the left side, you put it on the right side. So like you're putting it almost exactly the same as them because if you roll off, you're both even now with the terrain setup. So if you place it and then you that's your side, then it doesn't really matter. But if you're placing the terrain, you want to make sure that you're placing it the way you want to place it. And then if you know you don't have to roll off, then you're good to go. But if you know you have to roll off, you have to make sure that you know, you're placing the terrain exactly the way that they are. So I hope that helps uh, for player place terrain, the missions. So preparing the missions uh, ahead of time, kind of having a game plan for at least the first two missions, because if you're going into it, not really studying or knowing what missions or even a strategy in your head before you even place the first terrain feature, you're gonna be at a disadvantage. A lot of these like really good players know the missions like the back of their hand, even though they change ever so often, every six months. But reading the missions, maybe a couple days out, even the day like on the plane or wherever you're flying to, uh, you wanna say, especially the bomb mission, that's my favorite mission. I wanna be able to place terrain where I can put a bomb down, hopefully turn one, if not turn two. So you wanna lay the terrain out to make sure that you're placing bombs or at least getting guys onto objectives to place flags. So knowing the missions ahead of time is gonna be so much easier, especially the first and second mission. Uh, third, fourth, fifth, you might, have some time you know, at lunch or later on that day or that night to prepare for the next day. Most of my times I, I wanna know the first three missions or at least the first two and then the, that night, cause it's usually a two day event, you can then study the next three missions and kind of have a game plan of what you're gonna be doing. You don't wanna try and study all six missions at the same time it's it, you're not going to do it. Uh, I would go at least the first two because if you win the first two, you're you're doing pretty good. Then you want to go to game three, and then next day you want to uh, study the next three missions. So, how much line of sight blocking? Uh, that's another thing with the with the player place terrain is you want to make sure if the terrain is really small or it's just chunks and there's really no bases on them. Bases is huge. So if you don't have any bases on the terrain feature it's not gonna have a lot of line of sight blocking. So you're gonna either have to reserve, which you get to reserve for free now, but you're gonna have to reserve models, um, try and huddle up everybody in one terrain feature or whatnot. Uh, there's also really tall uh, WITC terrain, which in one Goonhammer, I think Goonhammer runs it. We won Goonhammer last year with Mortarian. We were able to hide Mortarian in that really big terrain feature because it's true line of sight. So if you can't see him, you can't shoot at them. So I made my list specifically to bring more tearing because of that terrain. So if you're running ITC terrain and you have that, you know that they have this big ass three story, no line of sight feature, you can run pretty big shit and be confident that they're not going to be able to shoot you. So how much line of sight blocking is in that terrain? That's going to help you build your list based off the terrain and all those other features. So 
All right, that was a lot, guys. That was just the first thing. All right, so I'm gonna try and space these out a little bit, but I don't wanna be talking too fast. So if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, definitely leave them in the comments. I, I, I respond very, very quickly. I work from home, so it's very easy to respond to these comments. Um, so let's get into the number two, and these aren't in any specific order, but the number two part of this is going to be practice. So practice, 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 practice. Okay, small tweaks. Now, what I mean by that is, let's say, I don't know, for example, ACO is coming up. ACO, I think, is in July, maybe March, April, May, coming up. I want to be able to have a list probably two months out to start practicing my army that I'm bringing. And every time I'm making a, a tweak or a change to it, I want to make small tweaks. I don't want to bring um rubric marines like two rubric marines and then next list bring no rubric marines or like change completely the the legion or whatever i'm playing like you want to make sure you're tweaking it very small so that way you're getting used to the army how they play their secondaries their stratagems all that stuff you want to make sure that you're mastering that legion so that way when you go to the tournament you don't even have to think. You know exactly what best stratagems you're going to use. You know exactly where you're going to be putting your guys. You know what secondaries. Most of the time, two out of three, you're going to know exactly you're going to be taking this going into the into the, each round. So small tweaks until eventually you get to the one list that you're doing very good at and you're winning like you know 66% of your games, two-thirds of your game. You're going to be winning those games and knowing that as long as you can beat your opponent, you don't have to change your list. Like you just want to do little tweaks till you have the list that you really want to run and then keep running that list in practice games until you get to the tournament. If you change it up too much, you're going to confuse yourself. You're going to forget what relics you have, what order traits. I can literally still name every single model in my granite list that I brought to LVO because I ran it so many times before I got to LVO. So that's the first thing about practice is you want to make sure you're practicing small tweaks before you even get there. This next thing is huge, clock. A lot of us maybe don't have a lot of experience with clock, but clock is huge in the tournament scene. Uh, it makes the game fair. Uh, if you guys are new and you are going to tournament to have fun and you don't expect to win a lot, still you want to practice clock. Like it, a lot of, I'm going to make a whole video on why tournaments are so fun, but if you just want to go out and have six games and, and enjoy yourself, you still want to be able to practice clock so that way you're not just sitting there for an extra hour because you clocked and your opponent gets to kind of run out the board. Um, you still want to practice and kind of get your moves going, but what's going to help with clock is making sure you're practicing the same list over and over and over again. And then when you practice clock, you want to practice speed clock. What I mean by that is if you have an hour and a half round, right? Um, make sure you know exactly what their clocks are. Some tournaments run an hour and 15 minutes each round. Some people run an hour and a half. Some people run an hour and 45 minutes for some RTTs. You want to make sure whatever they're running, you want to go 15 minutes before that. So most tournaments, if they have a three hour turn, each person gets an hour and a half, practice an hour and 15 on each opponent. Even if your opponent, like you were just doing a practice game, hit it on their time, hit it back, like control the clock, pretend it's your clock, like hit it back and forth for them just so you're, you're practicing your time. And speed clock is going to get you so much faster and more consistent and more confident in the games you're playing because you are going to get done at 15 minutes before the round ends. So that way, when you're actually going to an hour and 30 minute round, you're going to be, this, you're going to be like, holy shit, I have an extra 15 minutes to play this game out. Like it, it's going to be a huge advantage to you if you're practicing speed clock um, for your games. So that that's, that's a huge thing that you want to be practicing. Uh, cheat sheet. Uh, I was brand new into ninth edition. Um, coming in and, and I was a very competitive player going into War Machine and back in the day, like 10, 12 years ago, but coming back into it, I didn't know shit. So I needed to make a cheat sheet for myself. So when I first came into it, I basically wrote everything out uh, and I read a lot of old school stuff out. Even, even for work, I write everything out like old school. So when I'm making a list, for example, let's go with the Grandmaster. I'll put Grandmaster Dread Knight and then I'll put both of his spells. I'll put uh, needs a seven. So I'll put a seven and then like highlight it. Uh, and then I'll put 18 inches cause it's an 18 inch range. And then I'll put the description specifically what it says in, in the codex, um, for his first spell, second spell right below it needs a seven, 18 inch range, 
uh, four up invuln save on, on a unit. Those are two spells. Then I'll put Warlord trait. Um, everything within six inches core and character or obsec. Another Warlord trait. Uh, gets the pregame move him and core six inches. Uh, and then Relic. Uh, sigil of, of whatever. Uh, teleport every time it gets targeted once per game. Like I'll put those brackets under just the Warlord. That's my cheat sheet for my Warlord. Uh, instead of going through your phone and trying to find your Warlord and then going to your relics and doing all that, like, it, it's going to be so much easier just to have a little a little stock card with everything under it. And then you can even highlight. Um, I told this to Kivo because his son, 12 years old, is playing the game now and he's going to tournaments, which is awesome. But just looking at a black and white sheet and all the stuff written out for him, if you just do a highlighter, and highlight like red all the spells highlight yellow all the warlord traits or, or special things that the character has that's going to make your eyes follow the sheet so much easier and be like all right i'm looking for pink i need a seven 18 inch range i'm in range boom let's go what does it do specifically i don't know let's look at it all right cool it does that so it's so much easier to have a cheat sheet right in front of you instead of even flipping through your codex another thing about the codex these things little sticky tabs, you can't really see it, but the little sticky tabs color coded, you can put these in your codex to make it a lot easier to go through your codex uh, a lot easier. But I would just make a cheat sheet. Uh, now that's just the world. Then you have your second character. If you have a character that literally just doesn't do anything, it just buffs up uh, like a tech marine, buffs up the thing. You could put tech marine, put his spell, and then within three inches during command phase, give plus one to a thing. So you can do that so you don't remember. Uh, all the way to the left, I used to do command phase. So I'll put command phase and I'll put a little check. So each command phase, you know exactly what to do. Uh, for chaos, they have a lot of command phase stuff. So for Abaddon, I'll put like command phase, check. So make sure that you're looking at his card for the command phase so that way you, you know what to do. So cheat sheets, huge. Even if you're you know experienced, I'm still writing cheat sheets for uh, uh, demons. I did that in my last RTT when I ran Night Lords. I, I had a cheat sheet for my demons because I never fucking ran them before. So I knew exactly what spells I had to do uh, and what I did in my command phase. So that's another good thing is the cheat sheet uh, no matter what game you have. Secondaries. So secondaries have to be consistent uh, and you want to make sure that you have options. So if I'm going into a mission and I want to bring, I keep going to Great Knights because that's what I ran last year. Uh, I'm going to do banners most of the time. I'm going to do purifying ritual uh, and I want to do teleport assault. So I'm going to make my list. I probably should have put this one up top, but make your list based off of secondaries and you want to be consistent with the secondaries. You don't want to go into the game not knowing any of your three secondaries. You want to know, all right, almost all the time I'm going to have purify ritual, teleport assault, and the third one is kind of up in the air, but I want to be able to take banners or behind enemy lines. So you want to kind of make your list and practice those specific secondaries. All right. A lot of it is determined on the missions, which again, if you go at the top, you look at the missions, what missions do I want to, or what secondaries want to, do I want to do for the mission, but also making the list based off of the secondaries is going to be, is going to be huge. So secondaries have to be consistent. You don't want to change them up every single time. You want to have at least two pretty much down. And then the third one can be up in the air, depending on the opponent or depending, depending on the mission but the list is made around the secondaries and you're practicing consistent secondaries every single time, right? So that's another good one. Have options, uh, meaning that you wanna be able to have behind enemy lines or engage as an option. It's in the same you know, bracket uh, and you wanna be able to have like, all right, if one mission's better for behind enemy lines, I wanna be able to have behind enemy lines. If one mission's better for engage, I wanna have engage. If one mission's better for uh, bring it down, you know, just because you're playing knights, you wanna make sure that you're doing bring it down every single time. So have options, practice as much as possible. And that's what all I have to say about is practice. So, okay, let's, uh, let's take a break. Let's get a little water in us and then let's get back into the next part. All right, that feels so much better. <laughs> All right, guys, so next option, not option, thing that we're going to go over is going to be, let me bring this up for you, tools. So tools, tools, I don't know why I'm saying tools so many times. Tools are going to be simplifying the game, and uh, there's so many videos that I really want to do about just tools. <laughs> wow, okay. 
First thing, let's start at the top, and this is everything you want to kind of bring with you to the RTT or GT or wherever you're going, uh, is a clock. So you can buy a clock uh, on Amazon, I think it's like 15, 16 bucks maybe. Um, you can get one used off of Facebook, but it's always good to have a clock. You can practice with it. You can bring it with you. Uh, some, some places provide them. You want to make sure that they provide them ahead of time, but you always want to have a clock. Uh, don't buy the old school chess clocks that you have to hit down on both sides. Uh, Cause they're like, you have to wind them. Just get a battery clock. There's some really fancy battery clocks out there. I wouldn't spend too much money on the clock. There's literally just a cheap plastic one that you just hit back and forth. Um, and it uses one battery uh, and have a battery. So make sure you have an extra battery uh, because if the clock dies, it, it's your responsibility. If you're way behind on time or you're way ahead on time and then they're way behind on time, but the clock dies, it's, it's, it's your responsibility. So you, nobody really knows you can't argue it. Uh, so make sure that you have a, an extra battery. If your clock starts to go really dim and you're like, all right, it's time to replace the battery, you definitely replace it. So always have one extra battery in my box just in case uh, I need an extra battery. So clock is definitely going to be a good tool to bring to RTTs and GTs every time you go. Uh, and they're pretty small and compact too. Widgets, proxy bases. So proxy bases, not a lot of people think about, but it's always good to have like a proxy base because if you're using it in the beginning of the game, you're not going to have a lot of dead units. So you don't want to pick a guy up uh, and then use him as a proxy base because he's on the table. So you want to have a small proxy base if you're using a lot of 32 mil, use a 32 millimeter base. If a, if a guy broke off the base, um, you can use that as a, as a proxy. Like it's already, it looks cool. You know, it's got a cool base design. I use proxies a lot for my dread knights. So I have a big dread knight base, the big ovals. So that way if I'm pre-measuring or like seeing if turn one, I can get a direct line on a guy. I don't have to move my dude. I can literally just move the base, measure it out, put that down, use my laser, which is down here somewhere use my laser and see if I get line of sight. Do you agree I have line of sight? Yes, great. Now I know that I'm gonna move them there, turn one, get line of sight and shoot, there's no arguing. So if you have a proxy base, you're putting it down and you're kind of agreeing with your opponent that, hey, we both agree that I can see him turn one um, or the opposite. I put my guys here, how far can you guy move up? Great, let's measure, let's put your, your guy right there or proxy base right there. Use the laser, can you see my guy? No, great, then turn one, there's no arguing. You literally said that you couldn't see my guy. I said you couldn't see my guy. Uh, we both measured it out. So if he says, oh, now I can see your guy, well, obviously you fucking cheated. You moved more than you said you could. Uh, and now, now we're in a disagreement. Call the judge over, do whatever you gotta do. But proxy bases are gonna be really key to measure stuff out ahead, before the game, during the game, after the game, whatever you have to do. Um, widgets, so widgets are little nine inch sticks that you guys can buy on uh, Etsy or Amazon or whatever it may be. We are actually, we want, we want to make them for the channel. Uh, there was something that came up with a guy that was going to make them, um, not make them anymore. So, uh, maybe make them in metal. I'm not sure, but there's a, a lot of widgets that you can buy online now where I would buy like a nine inch widget, a six inch widget, a four inch widget, three inch widget, two inch one. So there's a, a, a maybe I'll post it down below, but there's a widget. It's a six inch widget on one end a four inch widget attached to it, a two inch widget, a one inch widget at the top. And then in between that, it's a little piece that comes out. It's a, a three inch widget with a one inch widget, two inch widget, and then a half inch widget. All that built in like one little, one little thing. So that is all you need and maybe a nine inch, but that little piece right there is all you need to measure stuff. Cause two inches like for coherency is, is huge. That's what she said. So it's huge. So when you're putting a base down and then another base two inches away, that's a huge like gap. Like that's, you're like this far away. So it's a huge gap measuring the two inches, three inches away from an objective marker, three inches away from lookout, sir. Uh, what, six inches away from um, a lot of stuff like command phase stuff, making sure that you're within the dark apostle range, giving out buffs, nine inches for deep strike. Uh, you want to make sure that you're getting as close as you possibly can. So the nine inch widget is huge, making sure opponents are outside of nine inches. So that way when you measure it, they're not like within eight or whatever. So there's a lot of widgets that you can be using. Um, so that way there's no arguing, especially at RTT and GT, you want to make sure that you're precise, quick and widgets help out a lot with that. So if you don't have one, go get one right now, uh, because it is worth it so much. And they're pretty cheap. If you, if you buy the little like six inch uh, widget. 
next thing cards token markers it's it's so bad to play a game of 40k without any tokens or cards whatsoever you forget what your guys have the opponent get, forgets what you guys have there's a lot of gotchas um and you don't even know if like you passed or failed. So a lot of times when you're casting psychic powers and you give, let's say a four of invuln save to, to a unit, if I don't put a token down, technically that never happened, right? Because, well, dude, what, what are you talking about? You have a four of invuln save. There's nothing on your guys. So, and also rem reminds you that if you're about to shoot at a unit that they have like field of pain, four of invuln save, trans hitman, whatever it may be, make sure that you have like cards around so there's no arguing about that either. Uh, they sell the cards with Games Workshop or you can make your own cards. Make sure you put exactly word by word what it says so that way you're not putting like hyphens or abbreviations or whatever it may be, like put the exact wording so that way there's no arguing. Cause sometimes uh, I had a card one time from the opponent that I knew the right rule because I, I run the same army, but his card said core or something, but it's core character, like whatever it may be. So he didn't have the right thing written down when if he just had the right thing written down, he would have been playing the right way. We both would have been, you know, whatever it may be. So make sure you're writing word by word exactly what the card or rule says so that way there's, there's no arguing. So, or you just buy the regular cards and use that. So. That's the cards. The tokens are also good. So coming in from War Machine, they have uh, little tokens that you could write on. So if you have like a little circle that you write down like minus one to hit, boom, simple token, put it down, minus one to hit. Uh, plus one attack, boom, put it down. Um, minus one attack, boom, put it on the opponent. Uh, minus two move, whatever it may be, put it on the opponent. So you have little tokens that you can write even permanent marker on. So you use the same tokens every single game uh, and make sure like if you have reroll hits, you have a token for that. If you have a uh, plus one to hit, you have a token for that. So you're putting down tokens to remind you and remind your opponent so it's even uh, throughout the entire game. So tokens uh, and cards are huge with preparing for games, games in general, but RTTs and GTs especially. If you're playing a friendly game and you just want to play, sure, you don't have to, but most of the time, 99% of the time, I'm going to have tokens, whether it be just a little fucking yellow piece of plastic, that's my token, boom. That that unit has something, you and your opponent have to remember something, but at least you have something on the table, <laughs> right? Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, dice and easy to read. You, you gotta love when you go into a tournament or a game and this guy got like super, super tiny ass dice that you can't even see from two feet away. Or they have uh, dice that, the most annoying dice are the sister dice and the ultramarine dice. Nobody could fucking read that. I remember I played John one time when I first came in into night. I was like, dude, I have no idea what your dice say. I trust you. Just tell me what the fuck it is. But honestly, if you're going to a GT or, R or RTT, you wanna make sure that you see and understand what the hell the dice say on the other side of the table. Nurgle have some weird dice, uh, some custom dice that people might use, but you wanna make sure that you know what the six is, if it's a facing dice, or if the one is the, the symbol, right? So you, you, you wanna know that stuff. So if you get a basic dice, right? Black and white, this is what it is. That's what that's you can see from across the room. That's the dice you want to be using. And also your opponent, you want to make sure that they're using pretty simple dice. If they have two sets of dice, one's like super complicated, ask like, hey man, do you mind if you use the other dice? I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. So make sure you have dice and easy to read dice. Uh, if you guys need some dice, we are selling dice. If you guys see this video, uh, it's going to be up on Discord. Dirtbag Nation dice. So extra tape measure. Uh, it's always good to always have a tape measure. You never know what's going to go on, go wrong. You can have a little dollar store tape measure as a backup tape measure, whatever it may be, but just make sure you have an extra tape measure. If your opponent needs a tape measure, you can always give it to them, let them use it for the, for the turn. Uh, but that's always just good to have carry tray and rolling carts. So this is good for bigger GTs. Uh, you'll see a lot of people that have the rolling carts. Uh, it's going to be hard to bring it on a plane, but some people use it as a carry on where they put the sling on and then you use it as like a backpack and then they can, you know, have their case as the personal item or their, their guys as a personal item. So a carry tray, uh, which is great. You can have one that comes apart and you can kind of put it flat in uh, your luggage, or you can just have um, a metal tray that I fit actually in my carry on case. So it's a you know little tray that I'm actually gonna make a video on how to make one of these, but it's a, I don't know, 12 by 16, 12 by 18, uh, size thing with a metal tray which all my guys could be on so that way every time you go to another table it's just one tray uh some guys have huge trays that you just carry you know from table to table so all your stuff goes on one tray so 
it's a lot easier to kind of have everything in, in, in one spot. Uh, a lot easier would be a rolling cart. So a lot of our TTs, we just take it out of a car and you know roll it inside. Uh, and then when we're done, we roll back outside and put it right back in our car. That could be good for local GTs, local RTTs. If you're going like on a plane, it's gonna be a little bit harder. But a lot of people go to GTs around the area or RTTs that they might drive you know, three hours. Um, and if you're driving, then just keep it in your car and bring it in with you. So rolling cards, I think they're like 90 bucks maybe on Amazon. Uh, you can just get one that you know folds up and then when you unfold it, it's got three levels. You lock it in place and it's, it's pretty sturdy. So if you wanna look into that, that's definitely a good suggestion. Or if you don't wanna get a rolling card, just make sure you have a big enough carry tray that you can just put all your books, everything, all your models without you know getting too close uh, onto a carry tray. So that's definitely a great tool to have. Books, facts, and packets. So we went to LBO and I think one of the biggest things that I regret was I didn't have a printed out packet. Um, some people did and it just helped out so much with going over what terrain feature did what, what keywords were with each terrain feature and they placed it in the packet at a time. So if there was any arguing or going over the terrain feature, you just pull out the packet and be like, nope, this is what it says. Uh, so having that ahead of time is gonna be huge. Your fact sheet, making sure that you have the facts uh, print it out or known, uh, have it saved on your phone so that way you can just pull it right up. Hey, here's the fact, this is what they changed, this, this is the new thing about it. Books, uh, you can't really argue with the what the book says. You wanna make sure that the book and the fact, you have that together, because sometimes the book, especially now, are just super wrong. <laughs> especially what who can use what stratagem, what is core, what's not core, all the crazy shit that they change. So you got that, and then you got the fact sheet right next to it. So. Books are always cool because especially with the psychic powers or warlord traits or, or relics, like the book just show, shows everything right then and there. So there's no really arguing with the books. So make sure you have your book. Uh, the Wahapedia you can't go by. It's gotta, gotta be a book. Um, and then paper tracking points, simplicity. So like I said, I'm old school. So if your phone dies or something happens with your phone or you have to exit out of the app, the paper copy is going to be what's sound. Um, if a judge comes over, they're going to be like, all right, phone died. What are the points? And I'll be like, well, I had this paper copy right here and this is what we have right now. So the judge is going to be like, all right, use the paper copy. So I, every single time I use an RTT or, or, or GT, I'm always writing everything out. Uh, you can actually make your own custom pieces of paper. A lot of guys use like the big, you know, piece of paper laminate. Uh, they bring like a, a, per, a Sharpie or a dry erase marker and they kind of change it every single time. So they have the missions, uh, secondaries, the primary, um, all the CP, all that stuff. So they can basically write down and keep track uh, manually. So that way there's, there's, you both agree, this is what you got and all that stuff. An app, I can't see my opponent's app. I can't see the points that he has. He can't see my app. He can't see the points that I'm using. So you have no idea what's going on. So if your opponent's keeping track, you can keep track as well. I would most likely keep track of paper. Uh, so that way you can write down, hey, what points did you get this turn? Great, I got four in this, I got two in this, and I got zero in this. Great, uh, you have how many CP right now? Awesome, and you're keeping track of everything right then and there, right in front of you. So that way at the end of the turn, you both can agree, hey, looks good, great, looks good, awesome, cool, done, right? So sometimes when people are just like doing the app, they're just like, all right, I got this, 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 all right, cool, your turn. What? <laughs> how many points are you at? Well, how many points do I have? How close is the game? Like all that. So writing everything down is just so simple. I have, I don't know, I, I don't have with me, but a little like peel off sticker thing. It's like a, a post-it that it has like just three different columns and I just write down primary, secondary, and then I write down my secondaries. Him, I do primary, secondary, write down his secondaries. And that's it. That's how, that's how simple it could be. And then you just keep track of the score, you peel it off, throw it away, good to go. On to the next game. So those are the tools that I would highly recommend making sure you have before you go to an RTT, if not going to a GT. These tools are gonna make your job and life so much simpler uh, and your opponent is gonna uh, enjoy playing against somebody who's very prepared. Uh, so hopefully you guys can start looking into this, invest, don't invest too much guys. Like don't, don't buy the, the top of the line, like stuff. Like it's it just, it's just a friendly game. Like buy a simple widget, um, buy simple cards, make your own cards, make sure you're printing out the right stuff. Uh, dollar tape measure, um, 
the carrying tray, you can literally build your own fucking carrying tray. If you have like one of those metal cooking sheets, they're like a dollar at the dollar store. You can just buy one of those. So don't go crazy with how much you're spending on it. Uh, and $16 clock, just it's a good little investment. We spend so much money on this game. Having these tools are going to make everybody's life so much simpler. And it's not based off the army. You're literally just buying it for every army that you play for the rest of the time you play 40K. So that is my insight on widgets and tools. So let's get into the next uh, topic. All right, next topic is gonna be going over the hotel situation, um, making sure that you have everything prepared. Uh, anytime that I'm going to a hotel, I always wanna make sure I'm doing this ahead of time. Um, I don't wanna do it like the day of or as I'm leaving or if my guy's going to pick me up, I, I don't I don't wanna you know be unprepared. But it's, it's, it's simple things, guys, but you gotta make sure that you have it because if you don't have it, you're gonna spend more money when you get there or have to awkwardly borrow somebody's toothpaste, which uh, I've had to do before. Like, hey man, you got some toothpaste? <laughs> I fucking forgot mine. Um, deodorant, obviously, you wanna make sure you have deodorant. Even if you don't usually you know stink or sweat, always bring it there's a thousand fucking people in this in this hall it's going to be hot you're going to be sweating you're going to be thinking mentally sweating like you're going to want to make sure you put deodorant on and you're just going to help people out around you um you don't want to be like magic players guys like that's not no that's a dig don't be like magic player guys like be be using de deodorant i would have to say uh, i'm sure a lot of people have horror stories but deodorant 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 so you can just go to the walmart and buy the dollar small stick deodorant unless you got something toothbrush uh hygiene really in general i put that up right right below that because i started thinking like just be hygienic like make sure that you're using hygiene to your best advantage so that way you're not the guy that is the smelly dude you're not the guy that has you know bad breath like you're gonna be talking a lot so you want to make sure that you're brushing your teeth uh maybe morning and at night if you're used to just doing it in the morning or just doing it like make sure you're, you're doing hygiene guys so uh, Tic Tacs, that's always good to have uh, for you or your opponent. Um, if somebody is like, you know, has pretty bad breath, like it's not really bad. You just put gum in your mouth and be like, hey, you want you want a beast? Uh, nonchalantly. <laughs> yeah, here, have some Tic Tacs, you know, eat some of yourself so you don't make the guy feel awkward. Advil is going to be huge. Uh, Advil is good for your joints. Uh, it's good for your brain. Uh, it's good so that way you don't have a headache waking up the next day and you're hungover. So Advil, a small bottle, you know, ibuprofen, whatever you may be, just have a, a bottle uh, that you can buy four bucks at, at Walmart and you just kind of take it with you. Uh, it's allowed to go on planes, all that stuff. So just make sure you have Advil so you can uh, take it uh, in the morning or midday or, or later at night, whatever, whatever you have, but make sure you have Advil. Uh, protein bars and breakfast. So you're going to be, you don't want, I don't want to spend a ton of money when, when I'm going on these trips. So I want to prepare by either going to uh, Walgreens or CBS or Walmart or wh whatever you want to do either beforehand or when you get there. So that way you're buying cheap stuff. So that way in the morning, you don't have to go buy a $20 breakfast before you play the game. So having a, a protein bar or a breakfast bar, like there's something that new that I started doing before the tournaments. So I'll just bring like a, you know, two, three, four dollar protein bar, like pretty good one that they have a lot of different flavors. Uh, and you have like one for each morning. So if you're there for three mornings, you want to make sure you have three protein bars. Uh, you can have six of them. So that way they, maybe you can have a snack midday. Uh, but most of the time after the first round is lunch. So you don't need something huge to hold you over to lunch. It's only like what, three hours and then you have lunch. So having uh, protein bars or breakfast bars, with you just a little box is going to be huge it's going to go actually a long way uh water <laughs> so go get a bunch of bottles of water you don't have to bring it with you on the plane obviously just like when you get there just buy a six pack of water um you could buy the, the big ones and just have them with you you can find a water fountain make sure you have a water bottle um but make sure that you are drinking a lot of water uh, because that's going to combine with beer. <laughs> so if you guys notice beer is last because beer is super important. If you guys drink, great. If you don't, no worries. Make sure you have a lot of water. But if you do drink, you got you to gotta bring the beer. Uh, story is at LVO, you can bring, you could drink in, in the hall and they had the little, they had, I think they had two bars and they sold beers for like $10 for a blue moon, which is fucking ridiculous. Uh, so we would go up to our room. We would pour uh, two beers into this plastic container that i got from the gift shop um for like five bucks so it was like a 32 ounce gift mug with a little bendy straw uh so i'd pour the beer and i just drink out of the bendy straw walking down through the hotel going to play a game and i'm just drinking while i'm at the table with my beer 
uh, and a little water bottle right next to me. So you can do it that way, which is probably the easiest way, uh, or you can probably just carry it around with you as long as they allow beer in the hall. If they don't allow beer, obviously you don't wanna do that, but if they allow beer, just like uh, LVO or something like that, make sure that you're bringing beer to have some fun with your uh, with your buddies, even afterwards. So if you're not drinking during, but afterwards you wanna kinda hang out and drink some beers, make sure you, you, you buy some cheap beers. Not cheap beers, but don't buy it at the place because then you're spending $10 a beer, you can go across the store and buy a six pack for 10 bucks, that's the way I'm gonna do it. So make sure you have water, make sure you have beer, and make sure you have all the hygienic stuff for the hotel. If you're bringing an air mattress, I didn't put that on here, but make sure you got an air mattress um, because sometimes you might have a buddy come with you or if you wanna uh, sleep on an air mattress and have you know somebody else sleep on, on the bed and then you know switch, do whatever the hell you wanna do, um, make sure you have like little stuff like that. So if there's anything that I missed or anything else you guys can suggest, there's probably some funny stuff that, that you could put in this list. Uh, but this is going to be covering what you want to put into like your little, um, bag of clothes and stuff. You want to put all this stuff in there with you, uh, to make sure you got everything. I don't, the next thing is not on there. So charger, <laughs> I totally forgot about this. This could be under tools, but you want to bring a phone charger. Uh, you want to bring a battery pack. So there's a couple battery packs you guys can buy. I don't have one next to me, but there's battery packs you can buy on Amazon. There's battery packs you can buy at, at a Walmart, but you literally just have it charged up and that's your um, secondary source of battery in case your phone dies or whatever it may be. So I have uh, an extra battery pack that I keep in my travel case um, for tournaments. Uh, I have my clock in there, I have all that stuff in there ready to go. And then I also have a charger, an extra charger in my case. So I have my main charger, which I pack with all my clothes. Then I have an extra charger that has, you know, it's in my, my travel case with, with my games. So I got two chargers with me, one for the hotel room, one for the battery pack. So that way I can charge my phone or tablet or laptop, whatever you need to do with you. So make sure you definitely have a charger for the hotel room and potentially one for uh, the extra charger. So that goes over the hotel. Let's get into the next topic, which is going to be the final check. So before you go, before you go to sleep, whatever it may be, you want to do, make sure you have the final check with everything that you want to do for the tournament RTT. And first thing is you really want to check your models. So you want to check that you have all the right models, if not some extra models. Uh, for example, I think I brought an extra like three guys, three um, gray knights with me. Cause what if you lose one and you only brought specific amount of models to LVO, which is, you know, you have to take a plane and you know travel that far. So I want to make sure I have an extra three models in my hotel room, in my bag. So that way, in case I lose one, like a guy or something happens or it breaks completely, I want to have that extra model that I could literally just pull out and replace it. So that way you're, you're good to go. And now you don't want to do that for everybody. I, I had like what, 25, 30 fucking space Marines. So I had like one or two extra models. But you don't want to have like an extra dread Knight or an extra Rhino. Like you shouldn't be losing those, but I'm talking about like little guys, like if you have zombies, cultists or whatever, like you can bring an extra two, three cultists. So those are the models you want to make sure, but make sure you have the models ready to go on your board so that we can literally just pick it up, go and, and, and leave for the day. W Y S I W Y G WYSIWYG. So you'll hear this in, in the, in the tournament scene, you want to make sure you guys are WYSIWYG or as close as humanly possible as WYSIWYG. What the hell is WYSIWYG? So what you see is what you get. Um, there, sh there shouldn't be any argument where if half your unit is like swords, half your units halberds, um, and you just tell your opponent like, no, nah, they're, they're all swords in that one. And it's, it's, it's kind of sketchy. So you want to make sure that all of your guys are what you say they are. Here's an example. All of my guys last edition had halberds. So ahead of time, before I told my opponent before the game, I literally just made a list of all swords. I was like, Hey man, all of these guys have swords, no matter what the fuck they, they have, they all have swords because they all have halberds, because halberds back in the day were the best way, so I modeled all my guys with halberds. So I didn't I didn't make it confusing, I didn't put some swords, some halberds, I literally just said, they're all fucking swords, all right? So every single model in my army has a sword. Dread Knight's a little bit different. Dread Knight needs a sword or needs a hammer. So you can't say a hammer is a sword or a sword is a hammer. You have to make sure that you have the sword or you have the hammer. That's what you see is what you get. Side cannon, silencer, make sure you have those guns on the models so there's no guessing on what the hell they have. Um, terminators, uh, if they have a combi melta, make sure you are 
kidding out a Melta, if they have a chain fist, make sure they have a chain fist. I, I, I don't like when people have a 10 man Terminator blob and all the weapons are swords, but then you have to try and guess which one has the, the, the chain fist, which one has the power fist, which one has the Meltas. You want to make it as easy as possible for your opponent and you to know exactly what has what. So Plague Marines are another example. I whizzy wigged every single Plague Marine that I have. Uh, I have the Cleaver for the models that have cleavers. I have the flails. I have the blight launchers. I have the melters. I have the power fist and the plasma. I did the same thing for my legionnaires for chaos. I have 12 fucking units of legionnaires. Every single one of them is WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. Uh, you might have to buy some more models if you want to go true WYSIWYG and making sure that you're using exactly what you want to use, or you want to make sure that you're only building the list with specifically what you have. All right. So WYSIWYG is gonna be super crucial in tournaments sometimes, almost all the time. It is a must to have WYSIWYG uh, with tanks, making sure that the tanks have specifically what guns they're supposed to have on the tank. There's some things you can get away with. Uh, combi melts on a tank, uh, which there's a lot of free shit in the game now. So a lot of tanks, they have like a free uh, combi melt a free whatever launcher you want to make sure that you're going over this with your opponent before the game so you're reading off the list uh this this rhino has a combi melt and, and a and an extra storm bolter this rhino has a combi melt and extra storm storm bolter this rhino has a combi melt and extra storm bolter they all have that you can literally just put a little melt -a gun right on top of the rhino and just say boom there you go it's got a it's got a melt -a. So WYSIWYG is huge in the game. You want to really start preparing your army and building your list to be WYSIWYG. Um, that's kind of what I'm doing for my uh, custodies right now. Half of them have swords so or halberds. I'm making sure that they actually have halberds. Half of them have uh, axes, so I'm making sure they actually have axes. So that's, that's definitely going to help you out uh, in the tournament scene is making sure that your guys are WYSIWYG. You don't want to confuse your opponent. You want to make it as easy as possible for both of you guys. Painted three colors. Now this could be easy. Uh, some people really love painting. Some people really love having their army just be beautifully painted on the table. I'm not like that guy. So I want to make sure that I have three colors so that way it's tournament legal uh, and you have to be based. So a lot of people didn't know that the basing counts as being um, a part of the tournament scene. So if you just have a black base and it's not done, you're not technically ready for the tournament. Um, some RTTs, you're fine without bringing three colors. You get 10 extra points for being fully painted. Some tournaments just give that to you. So make sure you know that ahead of time before you go to the tournament. Uh, some tournaments you can lose because you know your army's not painted, so you're losing 10 points each game. That's 30 points for the day that you're losing that you're not really gonna be able to place. So three colors. You can uh, primer, black, right? Dry brush, one color, dry it silver. Paint some little details with uh, a gold uh, and then do some red accents somewhere else. Boom, you got three colors. Uh, you wanna make sure that primer isn't showing or if it is, you wanna make sure that it's like not the whole model is just black and you just paint the eyes white uh, and then the gun silver. Like that's not really, you're, you're gonna have most of it primer. So you wanna dry brush the primer to make sure that all, most of it's dry brush so it looks cool paint the, the eyes, paint some little gold trim, and then do some silver on, on the weapons, and then boom, you have your three colors. Then make sure you wanna paint the base. Even if you have to, have to just kind of brush one color of paint, let's say you do like a desert scene, you do the, the silver, dry brush, or sorry, tan, dry brush it, wash it, whatever you gotta do, and then boom, there's your thing. You can throw uh, sand on there, put some glue down, put some sand down. There's a lot of crafting stores you can go to to get really cheap uh, basing. Um, but boom, there's, there's your one guy it takes like what, five minutes and do that for the rest of your army. It's not going to look the prettiest, but to you, you got three colors, your tournament ready, good to go. So that is making sure that you guys are three colors based, uh, and ready to go to get some points for the tournaments. One carry or carried tray. So you want to make sure that you have one case or carry tray, uh, with you. So, um, I have a games workshop black case that's the same size if not smaller as a carry-on so that way you can put whatever your list is inside the carry-on so that way you just take that onto the the plane and then you're good to go um the carry tray you want to make sure that you have one carry tray like we set up in the um the tools is you want to make sure you can put everything on one carry tray so you're not carrying your books under your arm in a backpack a little extra bag uh in your army you want to make sure everything is just ready to go in one tray so that way you can easily go you know from table to table all right so 
And finally, you just wanna make sure you have everything ready to go. So kind of use this list or use a list so you can write it out before you, you leave or before you go on the plane or before you get in your car. Uh, you wanna make sure you have everything the night before ready to go so that way you can just pick up and boom, get going. So that is uh, my list on how to prepare for a GT. All right, guys, let's wrap up this video. Hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully this will help you prepare for your next RTTs or GTs. Again, this could be for used for both uh, with the amount of GTs that they have every single year. It's always good to have all the stuff ready to go. So that way when you get there, you're good to go. You don't even have to think. You're literally just playing the game like you've played for the past, you know, 10, 15 games of practicing a list. If you got, if, if I did leave anything out, please leave in the comments below. There's probably a ton of good ideas that you guys have. If not funny or just want to bullshit, definitely leave, leave in the comment below. The Discord link is going to be in the com in the description below. Uh, and also, if you guys are want to support the channel, you like the content that is coming out also in the future, definitely head over to the Patreon. I really do appreciate you guys. There's so much stuff that we're upgrading. We did just get a brand new camera for streaming we got a gimbal uh, for the phone because there's a lot of comments where it's a little too motion you know sensitive so hopefully the gimbal will help out a lot with the battle reports coming up but that all comes down to the patreons because you guys are fucking awesome so definitely go join the uh, dirtbag nation this thing right here uh, is what we've been working on for the past month and a half uh, we had a lot of uh, artists or one artist on fiverr who created all of these different um characters from the 40k universe that a lot of them are armies that we play a lot of armies that we play against uh those are the ones i wanted to start out with uh, and then we're going to obviously have every single uh, army out here that we can kind of make uh, templates for so we partnered up with 3d6 wargaming they are a really cool company uh, i bought three different placemats with them uh, and some terrain stuff. So we partnered up with them where they're actually gonna be sponsoring us where if you use the link, it's not out yet, it's coming soon. Uh, if you use the link in the description, uh, you'll be able to go to the website, pick custom, whatever ones of these you want uh, in a set of six, uh, or you can pick one, all of them, like if you want just all Eldar, all Grey Knights, all Sisters, or just 40k dirtbags in general, you get to pick your own custom, uh, and then they'll make the six for you uh, to send it out to you. It's pretty cheap uh, as well. It's, it's mouse pad material. The graphics are, are awesome. Uh, so that will definitely support the channel. And we got dice coming up, the Dirtbag Nation dice. If you guys are quite uh, interested in that, go join the Discord, uh, DM me. We are taking pre-orders now. They sold out within two hours last time. Uh, so do appreciate you guys. Uh, we're, we're gonna be selling those again. And then finally, stickers. So if you guys love stickers, stickers are pretty cool. Uh, we got a shit ton of stickers, 25 of each of these designs. Uh, once they're sold, they're sold. Um, so those are gonna be partnered up with the dice. So if you guys buy some dice, you get to get out some stickers. Uh, pretty cheap as well. Not like some other people sell them for eight, nine, twelve dollars like they're gonna be pretty cheap, so. <sighs> okay, so a lot of stuff we said in this video. Again, I do appreciate it. If you guys are new to the channel, definitely subscribe so the videos can grow. Um, and also, if you have any suggestions, like I said, we have seven more pretty good how-to videos coming up. I wanna do more tactical videos on the channel so you guys can actually learn and get better at the game. Uh, and also, I just love feedback. So definitely leave the feedback in the comments. And what you could do right now is go watch another video on the channel pick something you guys uh, have interest in, go check that out. That's gonna help out with the algorithm and do all the YouTube uh, shenanigan bullshit. So appreciate it guys, good luck with everything. Hopefully this will help you out in the next uh, GT. Let me know uh, how the results are and we'll see you in another video soon.